January 15, 1967, on a bright, clear day in the Los Angeles Coliseum, the big question which had troubled the football world for seven years was answered. For the first time, the Green Bay Packers, champions of the National Football League, played the Kansas City Chiefs, the best team in the American Football League. The game was the first concrete evidence of the merger of the two leagues, and it was played for the highest stakes ever, $15,000 per man for the winning players. The Super Bowl was seen by the largest sports audience in the history of television. 65 million people watching the broadcast on two networks. Football line up here. Got to take it down, fella. Okay. Yeah, I get that starting line up here. Get a program. Football line up here. Yeah, you line up today. This premier spectacle of sport took place in a carnival atmosphere appropriate to the Hollywood setting. <laughs> and call of the Kansas City trumpeter went unanswered. Throughout the entire game, the Kansas City runners were hauled down at the line of scrimmage as the big mobile Green Bay defenders overpowered the blockers. It was established early that the Chiefs could not move the ball consistently on the ground. They were to gain only 72 yards rushing. Most of this yardage was born from desperation as Len Dawson scrambled to avoid Green Bay tacklers. This, of course, is a sign of weakness, not of strength. With their ground game choked off, the Chiefs took to the air. During the second quarter, they surprised the Green Bay defense with accurate passing, which elusive Mike Garrett made even more effective. The play-action pass was quarterback Len Dawson's most useful weapon. It was a play-action pass which fooled Green Bay and gave Kansas City its longest gain of the day. It's Dawson to Otis Taylor for 31 yards. The fullback's fake is the key to the play-action pass. When the Green Bay defense honors the fake, it must sacrifice the pass rush. With no pressure on him, Dawson has ample time to find a receiver. The receiver, in turn, has time to break free. Another play-action pass. Dawson to Curtis McClinton gives Kansas City its only touchdown. In super slow motion, we see the Green Bay defense sucked in by the play-action fake. The fake is so convincing that Dawson has his choice of two receivers.
Italian blocks, I come up. Now, if he came inside, I'm going to lose him, you, every time. I just had to lay back here. Now the Green Bay defense ignores the faking backs to concentrate on Dawson. In the second half, the Packers begin to blitz to put even more pressure on Dawson. Number 60, Leroy Caffey, finds an open road to the quarterback. The Green Bay front four is relentless. Dawson learns the hard way what NFL quarterbacks have known for years. Kansas City discovers that against Green Bay, success invites punishment. As the pass rush hurries Dawson, the task of the Green Bay defensive backs becomes easier. All pro Herb Adderley, aware that the rush has diminished the threat of the bomb, concentrates on denying the short pass. With his receivers covered short and long, Dawson tries to stall the rush with a screen pass, which dies on the long reach of Bob Brown. As the Kansas City offense consistently comes up short, frustrated coach Hank Stram ponders an impossible problem. Pro football games are won and lost on third down, for Kansas City, it's now third and 11. This is the play Dawson must make to keep the Chiefs alive. Dawson completes his pass to Reg Carolyn, but Ray Nitschke stops the play four yards short of the first down. As the Chiefs founder on the rocky Green Bay defense, they try to salvage what they can with a field goal attempt. But even that fails, and the missed third down has cost them possession of the ball. It is the third down play which separates the great quarterback from the average. The great ones convert third down into first. For Dawson, it's third and ten. He completes a screen pass to Garrett into the thick of the Green Bay defense, and the play gains only eight yards. But the Chiefs go for the field goal instead. Mike Mercer brings the Kansas City point total to 10. But the Chiefs will score no more this afternoon. Most third down failures force the team to kick. This third down failure forced the Chiefs out of their game plan into a hopeless game of catch up. Willie Wood's 50-yard return strikes deep into the Kansas City heartland. This fatal third down failure was the child of frustration. Darson, under brutal pressure from a Packer blitz, lobs a weak pass over the onrushing defenders. With nothing on it, the ball flutters into the hands of Wood. If there was one play upon which the game turned, this was it. I thought it was going to go all the way on the day, I think. Did somebody flick a toe or something? Yeah, kind of. No, somebody came from behind, you know. Um, I was undecided whether to change the field or not on that. He might have made it going for that corner, but I yeah, I, that's what I started to do. Overmatched as a team, some Kansas City players still have their moments. Number 55, E.J. Holub, shows unusual speed for a linebacker as he runs step for step with Jim Taylor to stop a sweep. The left side linebacker, powerful Bobby Bell, demonstrates his strength and agility as he fights off a block to make this tackle. In the circle,
tackle Buck Buchanan, knocked back two steps at the moment of impact, still with persistence and good pursuit, manages to wrestle Jim Taylor to the ground. Four times in the course of the game, Dawson did throw the ball to Otis Taylor, but it was far from enough. The timing was faulty on Dawson's first two passes to Chris Burford, his other top receiver. Both balls were caught dramatically, but out of bounds. However, Burford is a fine end. He caught four passes for 67 yards to lead the Kansas City receivers. Mercury quick Mike Garrett gave American Football League fans cause for pride. Garrett was one of the best backs on the field. When they did give the ball to Garrett, he brought the fans to their feet with skittering stop-and-go runs through the Green Bay defense. A beautifully balanced runner, Garrett time and again slipped tackles to gain additional yardage. Mike Garrett is a complete player. He blocks. His fakes were so convincing, but often he was tackled when he did not have the ball. And when his quarterback is in a hole, Garrett lends a helping hand. Above all, though, Mike Garrett is a great natural runner. Kansas City did have some stars, but Green Bay was a team of stars. On the third play of the game, Green Bay lost one of its stars when Boyd Dowler suffered a separated shoulder. He was replaced by 34-year-old Max McGee, the unlikeliest star of the afternoon. McGee fielded his first pass like Willie Mays and went on from there. McGee's catch is even more startling in super slow motion and it was a portent of things to come. The crafty Green Bay veteran used his 11 years of NFL experience over and over to take advantage of the young Kansas City cornerbacks. He beat Willie Mitchell to the outside. He beat Mitchell to the inside. When the desperate Chiefs resorted to double coverage, McGee beat both defenders. Although he had caught only four passes during the entire NFL season, on this vital afternoon, McGee caught seven passes for 138 yards and two touchdowns. 
He demoralized the Kansas City secondary. What a day, man. That's old girl rocking on that young man. Yeah. Let it go, let it go. Let it go, let it go. Let it go Come on, baby, huh? Come on, Madhu! He's going to pass all year. He's going to be hip and tuck and then we're going to run off the lead. Carol Dale, the Packers' other wide receiver, also found Kansas City's stacked defense an invitation to success. Dale gratefully accepted the short passes conceded by Mitchell, who was deathly afraid of the bomb. Hammered to the earth by Fred Williamson on this play, Dale learned something. Later he used this hard-won knowledge to sting Williamson. After the Green Bay Bombers laid open the Kansas City defense, Packer runners ran through the wounds. Jim Taylor, behind violent blocking, ripped through the gaps torn in the Kansas City defense. On that last touchdown, Max McGee's chain reaction block piled up Kansas City's stacked defense. Elijah Pitts also ran to daylight through the Kansas City line. On that touchdown, you can see the savage charge of the Green Bay offensive line. Fleming, Skoronsky, and Thurston wipe out the tiring Kansas City defenders. As the game wore on, the Kansas City defensive line folded under the steady pounding of the Green Bay blockers. The holes gaped wider and the pack of runners dug deep into the soft underbelly of the Chiefs. Whiplashed by plays that struck with equal devastation to either side, the Chiefs were helpless to stem the Packer onslaught. Finally, Elijah Pitts applies the coup de grace. With the final blow administered, Lombardi sends in his youngsters. In three minutes, rookie Donnie Anderson outgained any Kansas City back. On this play, his powerful stride accidentally lays out Fred Williamson. The hammer, the hammer. You know who got hurt? The hammer. The hammer. The hammer. The hammer. Hey, slap, the hammer got it. Get him, get him, get him. I'm out on the field. Quarterback Bart Starr was the architect of the Green Bay victory. On the Packers' first series, while his blockers were adjusting, Starr was harried by the Kansas City rush, but he never lost his poise. Firing into the Kansas City defense with cool precision, Starr first hits Fleming, then mixes his targets expertly. On this march, he finds Pitts. Dale. And finally, McGee for the touchdown. These four passes ate up 82 yards. On third and short yardage, Starr likes this daring play. The play action fake completely fools the Kansas City defense and Dale is wide open. Unruffled when a penalty nullifies the touchdown, Starr proves again why he is the best quarterback in football. Where Kansas City failed on its third down opportunities, Starr never misses. 
On third and five, he hits Max McGee for 10. On third and 10, he connects with Dale for 15. On third and six, it's Fleming for 11. On third and seven, Starr finds his fourth different receiver, Elijah Pitts, for another first down. A magnificent performance earns Bart Starr the game's most valuable player award. For the first time in seven years, Vince Lombardi's Packers, 35-10 victors over Kansas City, can claim an indisputable world championship. In this superb spectacle of a sport, even the losers can find some satisfaction. I thought we played well the first half, and I thought we got off to a good start the second half. But I think the, 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 intercept, the interception on the third and five situation seemingly changed the personality of the ball game. The star, I thought, was just terrific all afternoon at picking up the big third down play. They have good people. We had good people. We didn't play our finest ball game. They played well. I think Max McGee probably had the best football game he's had in the last 10 years. Of course, I don't know what their game plan was, but it's very evident that they were working on our left side. Back to cornfields, huh? <laughs> on another day in another year, it will surely be the turn of the AFL. But this spectacle of a sport belong to Green Bay.